This episode brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, the mobile RPG done right. the nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to there's a certain magic to nicholas cage movies okay not all of them but there's a certain magic to most nicholas cage movies there's a certain magic to early nicholas cage movies he's one of those actors that whether in good films or bad films or whatever mandy was he can't help but love the dude with his bizarre performances ranging from chaotic screaming to half-awake mumbling, you can't argue he doesn't just do his own thing and never apologizes for it. Not that any of us want him to apologize. And the time period you could argue was the decade of the cage was definitely the 90s. True, he had some hits and memorable moments in the 2000s, but the 90s is where he seemed particularly on fire. Even more than when he was actually on fire. Whatever you think of his movies from other decades, the world of entertainment loves 90s Nicolas Cage. I'll prove it to you. Hey, Tamara. Yeah? Can you go to Hollywood for me? What for? I want you to praise a 90s Nicolas Cage movie just because. Really? Yes. Do Con Air. Oh my god, that would be amazing! Stand on the street praising his greatness and await for their instructions. Woohoo! Hey, can I go to Hollywood too? No, you get a cookie. Ow! Today's review is Terms of Endearment. Or I guess, Con Air makes more sense after all that. Released in 1997, Cage shared the main stage with other big actors at the time, John Malkovich and John Cusack, but it turns out this movie was the taxi of action films as practically everybody in it went on to success, including Steve Buscemi, Ving Rhames, Danny Trejo, Calm... O'Brien, Monica Potter, Kelty Williamson, Rachel Tickleton, and even Dave Chappelle. I guess it makes sense to put so many big and crazy performances together so that Cage seems like the least crazy out of all of them. Directed by Simon West, the same guy who did Tomb Raider, Expendables 2, and no shit, Rick Astley's never gonna give you up video. This is exactly what you would expect from a guy who directed Tomb Raider, Expendables 2, and no shit, Rick Astley's never gonna give you up video. It's over the top, filled with energy, covered in more 90s cheese than a Ninja Turtles pasta dinner. It's everything you would expect and want out of a movie like this. There's a lot to enjoy, so let's take flight. This is... Say. Might I perchance request some cookies? It's a Brookheimer production. How else would this start? Oh, speaking of which, this is Con Air. The film opens with Cage playing Army Ranger Cameron Poe returning home after being honorably discharged. Here's footage of the ceremony. <laughs> He meets up with his wife, Trisha, at work, who's excited to start their new life together. You kidding me? <laughs> you gonna be in Miss Alabama? Well, that makes your daddy very proud. How many times have I told you I'm not pregnant? Oh, who am I kidding? I'd be more concerned if Nicolas Cage didn't greet me like this. But trouble comes a brood. Hey, how about joining me and the boys for a cold one, huh, darling? Well, thank you, gentlemen, but I'm taken. This is a special occasion. If you don't mind, I'd like to spend a dance with my wife. Yeah, you'll notice Cage has sort of a Raising Alabama accent in this. His southern voice is kind of like if Keanu Reeves from The Devil's Advocate ate Foghorn Leghorn. A tube of toothpaste and two packs of palm oils at the no. canteen. He's been a terrible husband to all three of his wives. I got locked down three months before she was born. Why, well, I don't want to keep you from guarding the chickens. It's not especially good, but... I'm not gonna tell him, are you? In a somewhat confusing scene, they're attacked by that group of drunks and Poe kills one of them in self-defense. But since he's advised to plead guilty, he gets even more time than what his lawyer said he would get. Admit to it. Serve maybe a year. You shall remain incarcerated seven to ten years. I'll see your ha huh, and raise you a... what? 
I don't know. I'm sure it's the same judge who put John Spartan away. All is fair and means to an end court. Now, prison life is very structured, more than most people care for. But there's a spirit of camaraderie that exists between the men. As the credits roll, years go by and Poe's daughter writes to him. He lovingly responds, somehow including his clunky accent in every letter. Dear Casey, it was so good to read your letter. Dear Daddy, today was my first day at first grade. I didn't like it. Mama says I have to go back. Tell her not to make me. Dear Casey, I am in prison. Not up, Daddy. Dear Daddy, are you ever coming home? Dear Casey, why did you write me one sentence? That was weird. Enough time passes though, and it looks like he's finally being released. His bunkmate Bubba O, I mean Baby O, Bubba O weirdly sounds better, is ecstatic for him. Yeah, but like at this new prison you're going to, who's gonna watch your back? God's got my back. <laughs> I'm going home, son! What, did Bubba squeeze his nads off screen? <laughs> I'M GOING HOME, SON! For his safety, they place him on a prison plane with the most dangerous criminals in the world as two cops oversee the transport. One named Larkin, played by John Cusack, and the other named Malloy, played by Az Kicker. Yeah, sounds like the personalized plate of a Trekkie. A cop is being snuck on to try and get one of the prisoners to confess some information, leading to one of the coolest scenes in a movie like this, the lineup. Yeah, you know this routine. Fast editing, slow-mo footage, and verbal backgrounds about the badasses you're about to see. That's William Bedford, a.k.a. Billy Bedlam. Caught his wife in bed with another man. Killed her parents, her brothers, her sisters, even her dog. Nathan Jones. He wrote a book in prison called Reflections in a Diamond Eye. They're talking to Denzel for the movie. These scenes are always so awesome, you can replace the characters with anybody and it'd still be intimidating. Cyrus Grissom, a.k.a. Cyrus the Virus. Kidnapping, robbery, murder. Arthur Reed. Tenth third grade at Lakewood Elementary. Plays the piano, wears a yellow cotton sweater, nearsighted since birth. Buster Baxter, Arthur's best friend. Obsessed with aliens, owns an amateur detective business, plays the tuba. Profited off the now multi-million dollar holiday, Baxter Day. Pal. Pal's a dog. Owned by a narvark. This is why you're here! Figure out how this is possible! Oh man, it smells like so much shit in your mouth. Told me he loved me. Dave Chappelle. He's in Rotten Tomato Prison for not using woke jokes. Hold your tweets, we need him alive! Hey Larkin, who's that guy? That is Cameron Poe, a parolee hitching a ride home. He just got picked up for a Pantene Pro-V commercial. He's getting some practice. What you looking at, punk? Nothing, I was just admiring your cage. You hear that? Nicolas Cage is admiring a cage. I expect five memes in the next three minutes, internet, go! Welcome aboard. My, my, as I look around, I see a lot of celebrities among us. Christ, that's an understatement. Oh, stewardess, what's the in-flight movie today? It's called I'll Never Make Love to a Woman on the Beach Again, and it's preceded by the award-winning short, No More Steak for Me Ever. I have literally waited hours for someone to ask me that. Thank you for allowing me to do my routine. I hope this goes smoothly. All those monsters on one plane. Please, Jenny, this is a well-oiled machine. Boy, Cusack, been holding that one in long? Lousy bitch taking all the Doritos from the break room. Here's my chance to snap at her. Please, Jenny, this is a well-oiled machine. You know who else was concerned about stuff? Hitler! But wouldn't you know it, something does go wrong. As one of the prisoners named Cyrus the Virus, played by John Malkovich, teams up with some of his other prisoners and breaks out, taking the guards hostage and freeing the inmates. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. As much as I mock Malkovich's acting in other films, he really is perfect in this. His brilliantly pretentious yet childish nature makes him a perfect foil to Cage's simple yet grown-up demeanor. You lost your mind? According to my last psych evaluation. Yes. And yeah, seeing how this is a Bruckheimer production, we really should do a count of how many shots were made just to go before the title in a commercial. Welcome to Con Air. But the cop that snuck on uses his gun to try and take control of the plane. The next time you choose a human shield, you're better off not picking a two-bit negro crackhead. Hey! I might turn that into a character. Thanks, Galbatorix! Poe tries to talk him down, saying he's gonna get everyone killed, resulting in the cop getting shot, but even worse, getting a disappointed cage face. That's less of a guy who just saw someone get murdered, and more of a guy who thought, Mmm, I just missed the breakfast baconator at Wendy's. They discover that three prisoners they need to drop off on ground have been killed, though, meaning their cover will be blown when they land. We are three white guys short. 
Or as they say in Ebonics, we be fucked. Wow! That's some heavy 90s! They get three volunteers to impersonate the prisoners. While in Cyrus's cell, Larkin finds the original Da Vinci Code. That car. Mr. E. Enigma. <gasps> Cyrus is the Riddler! Stay here. Don't touch anything. They also discover a box that says, do not open. Hey, what are you doing? Just leave it alone. He told you not to touch anything. Eh, he's a cop. What do we know? <laughs> if that was Joan Cusack, you'd all listen. All of you stay here! Do not touch anything! Well, that's what they get for not getting me a Malibu, Barbie! Cyrus exchanges the prisoners for even deadlier ones, gaining a pilot but losing a Chappelle. Wait! Memes, please. Hmm. Congratulations, you have passed Memes 101. Please collect us wedding Jordan Peele as your diploma. Nobody on this aircraft gives a flying fuck. <laughs> Get it? Flying fuck? <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all week. I really should have kept Chappelle. Oh, who am I kidding? He would have quit anyway. Meanwhile, on the ground, the two angry cops do what angry cops always do in these movies. Be angry! You, you little shit. You got my agent killed. He brought a gun on board and he got himself killed. And in doing so, he compromised the safety of my men. Your men are incompetent! These characters are such archetypes, you can put them in any situation and they disagree about everything. What do you want for lunch? I don't know. Pizza? What do you think you're doing, Kerfluffle? My job! And apparently yours, Obenigans! You have no idea how to handle this operation. This operation was botched the minute you showed up! You have no right, Kerfluffle. No right! What about the rights of my dead partner? Fine! We'll do delivery, but no carry-out! Fine! What kind of toppings were you thinking? I don't know. Pineapple. That just ain't right, Kerfluffle! What about the rights of my dead partner? One of the new prisoners is a child serial killer named Garland Green, played by Steve Buscemi. Because, let's face it, only Steve Buscemi could play this role in 1997. What do you want to do with him? I don't know, but this is no way to treat a national treasure. Thank you, it was critically underrated. They set him free and get on the radio with the two cops on the ground. Listen, Grissom, you puny fucking animal! Hey! I don't like him. If he speaks again, this conversation is terminated. That was a great impression of Twitter. Where are you going with my plane, Cyrus? We're going to Disneyland. You're lying, Cyrus. You know, Touchstone is a Disney property. Maybe? We will be flying over the shores of Mexico, but first we have to change aircraft. Thank you, and have a pleasant flight. Larkin puts together that Poe might be staying on the plane to save the few good people still on it. But da! I am authorized to bring Agent Sims killers to justice. When exactly did this become a DEA jurisdiction? The second the DEA agent was martyred. We're going with black olives! Oh, why does it have to be black olives instead of white olives? There's no such thing! Wrong! They are found in Portugal, east across the Mediterranean. But not on pizza! You're not on pizza! You're right! What about the rights of my dead partner? Did you even have a partner? No! Cause he's dead! Okay, we all know how this ends. Whoever's better looking and has a more likable personality is going to live. The other gets blown up. Ha! Huh. Well, I think we all know how this is gonna turn out. Oh, say goodbye to my wife and kid. Wait, do you even have a wife and kid? No. Cause they're dead! Introducing Raid Shadow Legends! Raid is a mobile RPG! Done right. right! Not every RPG game must be cartoony and cutesy! Enough with candy, rainbows, unicorns, and bright colors! Get real, raw, dark, epic, and awesome! Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark fantasy and realism! Explanation point! Hello! The game is cross device, so you can play with the same user and switch between devices! Whatever you want, and however you want! The graphics are amazing and the game is super fast as well! Raid has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title! Like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss battles, PvP battles, and hundreds of 
champions to collect and customize. I never expected to get this level of performance out of a mobile game. Check, Check out, out the amazing graphics and details on those champions and in Raid you will have the ability to personalize, customize, and choose the artifacts and design a unique mastery build for each of them? Question mark? No. Explanation point! My favorite champion is the Executioner. He looks great and plays great. More than 50 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game and the best part, it is free to play. So go and click on the link in the description box and start playing. Clicking on this, you will not just enjoy one of the best mobile games of the moment, but you also will be supporting this show. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid via my links, patreon.me slash nostalgia raid, which you will also find below in the description and get a special package with 100,000 silver, uh, uh, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and the amazing champion adjudicator. This package will only be available for the next 30 days though. So go click on the link, patreon.me slash nostalgia raid, and get the special offer today. <laughs> Hey. Hey, you can see us at C2E2 in Chicago, Illinois, February 28th to March 1st. Booth 102. We have two panels this year, a Channel Awesome panel Sunday at 3.15, and a Movies Everybody Disagrees With You on panel Friday at 6.45. But if you can't make either of those, drop by Booth 102 to say hi. You can also see us at Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, April 3rd to the 5th. We'll have a booth and panels there as well. Drop on by and say hello, we'd love to see you guys there. So something appears to be wrong with the landing gear and it looks like Chappelle has something to do with it. So that's what happened to Pinball! Cut him loose! Not exactly a proper barrel. I mean a dummy that poorly made should at least be buried with some dignity. Poe writes a message on him and they kick him out of the plane. Oh boy. You see that? Every time we get a wax. A Mark Twain Award winner falls from the sky and lands on my car. Last week, Neil Simon fell on my Cadillac. Larkin gets Poe's wife and daughter in his office to see if they can figure out why he would choose to stay on the plane. It's not uncommon that some parolees actually fear their release date. Fear of coming home, fear of living in society. My daddy's afraid of coming home, whatever. Crayons! He's got this little girl to come home to. Have to be a pretty strong reason to keep me on that plane. Mommy, I like hearing we may never know why daddy abandoned us. Crayons! Speaking of which, one of the inmates finds that Poe lied as he was going to be let go when the plane landed. Put the bunny back in the box. Put the bunny back in the box. I think it's safe to say that line was only written because they knew Nicolas Cage was gonna say it. I mean, if Arnold was there, it'd be a batch of cookies and he would say, PUT THAT COOKIE DOWN! NOW! The two of them squat fight. That's a thing now. And Poe impales him on a pipe. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? Oh yeah, if it was Arnold. Who told you you can eat my cookies? So Poe smells his hands, as we finally get some dialogue from the much built up child killer. What if I told you Insane was working 50 hours a week in some office for 50 years, at the end of which they tell you to piss off? I'd say sorry you worked corporate at Toys R Us. I bet a lot of you turned out this way. One girl, I drove through three states wearing her head as a hat. You just snuck aboard this movie, didn't you? Like, you were shooting a remake of M next door, and suddenly you're like, I want to invade a dumb Bruckheimer film! And nobody was brave enough to turn you away. Well, all I can say is, well done. You're making Nicolas Cage look like the normal guy. The plane lands on an airfield in the middle of nowhere to grab another plane to complete their escape. Thank God the innocents were spared. Larkin arrives in secret at the location while Cyrus gets ready to kill the guards, but Poe again intervenes. Well, it's not difficult to surmise how Nathan here feels about killing guards, and my own proclivities are uh, well-known and uh, often lamented facts of penal lore. That is the most John Malkovich thing I have ever heard John Malkovich say. There is no way the writer of this film came up with that line. It must have been written by the foppish one himself. 
How dare you, critic? Ba How dare you think I would impose my creative intellectual endowment on somebody else's creative endeavors? Oh, really, Malkovich? You're telling me that was always the line from the movie? Yes. True, I may have improvised a little bit off script, but it's still the general ballpark. What was the original line? Well, naturally, I keep the scripts of all my masterpieces on my phone. Ah, here we are. So in the movie, when I say... Surmise how Nathan here feels about killing guards, and my own proclivities are uh, well-known and uh, often lamented facts of penal lore. In the original script, it was... All right. Again, same general ballpark. Well, you're certainly dedicated coming into this review wearing a prison costume. Oh, this isn't a costume. Oh. Then... I was asked to do Bird Box 2. Ah. Uh, and I take it you said yes? No. But I thought about it. Ah. Uh, that, that was enough. Pose right. So get back there and dig the plane out. But not everybody is looking so lucky. Hi, what's your name? Wanna play? <laughs> what hat size are you? Larkin runs into Poe and they both explain their situation. There's only two men I trust. One of them's me, the other's not you. You're not such a bad guy, just always in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's what my agent's been telling me recently. What are you gonna do for me? What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save the fucking day. I am so hard. It looks like some of the inmates were trying to steal the plane that everybody was going to use, but the rest of the inmates stopped them, crashing into a gas station. Sai Anara. No! Must run with the most intense indifference only the cage man can give. Oh no, Roadrunner's coming right at us. Wanna sing? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. I have great parents. While Garland successfully transforms into a Peter Lorre cartoon, it looks like the cavalry arrives, so our inmates have to think fast about how to fight them off. This is the boneyard. This is the hangar. This is our plane. This is how Malkovich tells the story of Peter Rabbit to his kids. What's that? That's a rock. Well, that's a different cage, Bruckheimer production. At least they're progressive criminals? Get them in there. If they give any trouble, kill them. What can I do? Mm, hop in a birthday cake and don't pop out until you hear Dear Cyrus. The inmates take out a good chunk of the cops and get back on the plane to take off, accidentally taking Malloy's car with them. It's okay, my vehicle's in hot pursuit. On any other day, that might seem strange. Over 20 years later, that's still one of the funniest lines I've ever heard. Garland gets on the plane as well, and oh look, the kid's okay! You can find your folks in the fridge! Poe's note from his daughter is discovered though, but Baby O takes the rap saying he's the one that's been lying. It's pretty clever, huh, bitch? No, that's clever! It's really not. That's the best line a criminal genius could come up with at that point? Often lamented facts All of right, penal fine. lore. My daddy is coming home on July 14th! My birthday is July 14th! I don't have to mock Malkovich's voice, he's doing a pretty good impression right now. July 14th! Make a move and the bunny gets it. Was there a rush to finish writing your lines in the last third of this movie? To my own proclivities are... You know what? I'll take it! I'll take it! They get chased by more cops as Baby O seems to be on his way out. There ain't no God. But he don't exist. Hey, where you going? I'm gonna show you God does exist. I'm gonna star in Left Behind. That'll prove to you God exists and prove to me that he doesn't. I'm so angry, I'm not even gonna flinch when you shoot me. I will, however, let out a passionate OWIE! The plane makes it to the Vegas Strip, which officially makes this part of the Cave Vegas Holy Trinity, as of course they have no choice but to land on the Strip. Well, evil Las Vegas. We got the whole world in his hands. 
Is it in Buscemi's contract that when doing a Bruckheimer film, he has to be strapped to a chair acting crazy? <laughs> I'd just like to say, as cool and awesome and badass as this scene is, we could have been touching down in Disneyland. Just say it's a spin-off of their blockbuster giant. Not the sands, it had hours of life ahead of it. I love how a spinning propeller slicing through a metal wall is met with a comfortable step backwards. We couldn't even get a Malkovich soliloquy out of that? In recent memory of late, I cannot recall an action that signified such, oh, never mind. that guitar is heard literally when Cage gets up every morning. But cartoony Malkovich gets away, and I guess that's just material for the sequel. Hey, Paul. Next time, take the bus. So that was Con Air, a goofy but still pretty enjoyable action flick. How are we still going? Yeah, despite this perfectly good spot to end and even a decent runtime of an hour 40 minutes, the film decides to go an extra eight minutes with a completely pointless fire truck chase. Thank God police always leave keys on their bikes. Away! All right, so here's the thing. I have no problem having an extra end battle. Hell, James Cameron practically made a living perfecting that. But it has to either outdo or at the very least match the previous action sequence you just had. And in all honesty, this climax kind of sucks. Not the idea of a fire truck chase, though Grant is not as cool as a fucking plane landing. But look at how it's edited. Look how sloppy it's paced and how hard it is to make out. It's almost like it realizes this is a waste of time and tries to get it over with as quickly as possible. Hell, look at this edit after Cyrus flies off the truck. Is that at all how he fell or where he landed? I swear, I'm not re-editing that. This is literally the two shots back to back and they make no sense. And for a criminal mastermind, he couldn't put together that the best way to avoid this incredibly slow moving squasher was to move his head. I know he's tired, but a lean forward was too much for his brain to process. That's not difficult to surmise how- Got it! This is the only part of the movie I consider lame. And it only gets lamer every time I see it. I honestly think it would have a faster and more fitting ending if you simply showed us this. Cyrus. Chris. I'd be satisfied. In a weird way, I'd be satisfied. Poe saves the bunny from the sewer and thanks Larkin for his help. There's now three men I trust. Am I one of them? No, it's the bunny. The second is that chimp I watched in Ghost Rider. Tell me you're surprised. Hello, Cameron. He finds his wife and kid and finally gets her the toy. I got a present for you, Casey. I like bears. No, 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 honey, it's okay. I got a picture. A picture of you. And it's still a better bunny than what you got. This was fun to search. So everybody seems to get a happy ending. Even psychopaths bound to kill countless amounts of children. New shooter coming out, new shooter. Does the new shooter feel lucky? Yes, yes he does. And that was Con Air. Unless is there a climax with a sewage truck or something? No, no, it's real this time. This is a super enjoyable, mindless flick. It's not deep, it's not groundbreaking. If it was never made, cinema wouldn't suffer a major loss, but it's just fun. All the actors look like they're having a ball, the setup is creative, it's got plenty of laughs. With the exception of that unneeded action sequence, it's a good time all the way through. It's nice to see a Cage action flick that's enjoyably crazy and he's not the enjoyably crazy part about it. If anything, he's almost the voice of reason. It's rare to see an over-the-top film that he's not over-the-top in and it surprisingly works here. So buckle up and take to the skies with this goofy but definitely fun 90s hit. The only 
part that got under my skin, though, was never delivering on that Steve Buscemi character. I know that's part of the joke, but it just didn't seem satisfying to me. It just seems weird to build up something so early on, yet never give a payoff. I think he's forgotten all about this. Yeah, I'm starting to get that feeling too. My own proclivities are uh, well-known and uh, often lamented facts of penal... Hey, Doug Walker here. The Acumen Fund is this week's charity shout-out. Founded in 2001, the Acumen Fund is a global venture fund that uses entrepreneurial approaches to solve the problems of global poverty. They seek to prove that small amounts of philanthropic capital, combined with large doses of business acumen, can build thriving enterprises that serve vast numbers of the poor. Their investments focus on delivering affordable, critical goods and services like health, water, housing, and energy through innovative market-oriented approaches. If you take a look at their site, you can see they believe that pioneering entrepreneurs will ultimately find the solutions to poverty. Any financial returns they receive are recycled right back into new investments. This is a smart charity with a four-star rating on Charity Navigator and deserves any attention or donation you decide to throw its way. Take a look and see what you have to offer.